our bodies, as they become more conductive because we absorb this stuff, these signals become more detrimental to us as well. Uh, we're an electrical organism, so all these things hamper our own health function. Another article, the effects of HARP on the ionosphere. Again, the atmosphere is nothing but a massive physics lab for these people, and they seem to have no regard for the consequences. Uh, clearly, something radical happening to this cloud, and you know we can... Uh, say for certain that something's going on, some sort of experimentation. This is not a natural phenomenon. Same here. Now, this is an article by a Canadian journalist called Will Tom named Will Thomas, Kim Trails, Wireless, and You. And again, as our bodies become more conductive from these particulates and we're exposed to more and more of these signals, and especially the signal from HARP, which we see, by the way, the, the signature clouds above our area a lot. HARP helps build the high pressure up like we've had over us again and again and again. These particles dry the air out. If anybody wonders why there's no dew in the morning, you almost never see dew. We have single digit humidity because these particles absorb and accrete all available moisture. They virtually suck it right out of the atmosphere and out of the foliage. So uh, these facilities, these ionosphere heaters, are, are a radical effect in, in the weather we, we patterns we see happening of late. History Channel also airs proof HARP weather manipulation. Uh, a lot of documentation on this. Jet stream movement, unprecedented jet stream movements. And we, we see this almost all the time now, in the, in the, uh, in the lower 48 especially. The, and, and this appears to be connected to, for example, what they might be trying to do in the Arctic could be affecting us horrifically here because the jet stream as it moves across us, it's part of that long-term manipulation that I believe right now this is why we're frying at this point because there are some very profound things happening in the Arctic and we appear to be one of the reasons that gets thrown under the bus for, their, for the manipulation of things they're trying to do to accomplish what they're trying to accomplish in the Arctic. So again, this is a very complex equation and when you affect something upstream, it affects everything downstream. More HARP signature clouds. You see the, um, the ribbing in these clouds. This is, this is typical of something exposed to the HARP frequency. Now, this is Project Lucy, which involves these ionosphere heaters. Again, these massively powerful atmospheric heating devices. They are releasing, methane is releasing now around the globe in many locations, and I'll elaborate on that as I go further into this presentation. But as this methane is hitting the atmosphere, methane is over a 10-year time horizon, 100 times more potent a greenhouse gas than CO2. It's virtually like covering the planet with a layer of glass. Now, their latest proposal, as the experiment gets worse and worse, as they play weather whack-a-mole, they're now, you, we believe they're already at this program, to use the ionosphere heaters to nuke the atmosphere in a desperate attempt to try to degrade the methane that is already one of the consequences of the programs they've already been at for 60 years. So the, the equation just gets worse and worse. And we believe, by the way, they have been at this for about 60 years. We have documents on geoengineeringwatch.org um, from the NASA archives that show weather modification activity in the U.S. back to the, to the uh, mid-40s. More HARP-exposed clouds. Chinese scientists create second artificial snowstorm in Beijing. Mainstream media covered this because the Chinese government openly announced they were creating artificial snowstorms. This is turning what should have been a rain event into a snow event. It's happening here regularly. December 21st of last year, we had a massive artificially nucleated storm. And when you're in the woods, like where I live, 40 degrees, and it starts snowing, these giant artificial flakes, and all you can hear overhead is aircraft flying low. We've tested the snow. It's packed full of metals. And um, you know this is causing horrific damage to the trees and the foliage. This is ozone hole from the Arctic. You see 1984, where you don't have any blues. 1997, lots of blues. This also is a part of the geoengineering program consequences. As they saturate the atmosphere with these particulates, it causes ozone damage. The science is extremely clear on that. Many have felt how hot the sun feels on their face. If you drive through parking lots in Costco, Walmart, or, or around Reading, you'll see the south-southwest sides of the trees literally burnt off. This is not natural. And this ozone hole is expanding. They're trying desperately to hide it. Unprecedented ozone hole opens up over Canadian Arctic. More documentation on the ozone problem. Recent changes to Gulf Stream causing widespread gas hydrate destabilization. This is methane hydrates, which are releasing from the seafloor as we speak in multiple places around the globe, as geoengineering has altered the weather patterns, it's altered the rain cycles, it's altered, the, again, as the wind patterns are altered, the ocean currents are altered, that appears to be a causal factor, a major causal factor in triggering methane hydrate release. More wind, more storms, we're seeing that now around the globe. Arctic Methane Emergency Group, planetary catastrophe is inevitable. This is from a group of scientists in the Arctic right now. 
And again, one must always sift the baby from the bathwater. And I've met some of these scientists. And although they are correct that the methane is a, a global game-changing event and a planetary catastrophe, what do these guys propose? That we geoengineer. As if it hasn't been going on for 60 years already. Now, either these people live in a hole or they're lying their butts off. So if this is an attempt to legitimize geoengineering, we don't know for other reasons or aspects. But we know enough about geoengineering to know at this point it is a cure, quote, cure, that is far worse than the, than the disease. The planet has not been allowed to respond. Now, this is another attempt that should show the, the depth of, of this issue. White House, this is, this is only three weeks old. White House warned on imminent Arctic ice death spiral. We will probably have an ice-free Arctic this year. Many people need to understand this is not about Al Gore. It's not about carbon credits. I do not like Al Gore uh, or his carbon credit scams. But the bottom line is geoengineering has decimated our planet's climate. As the ice disappears, that heats the Arctic Ocean. That releases more methane, more heating, very vicious downward cycle. White House trying desperately to hide this at this point. I don't think they can hide it much longer. This is methane coming from the seafloor. Uh, it, it's burning a hole in the ice. We're seeing this around the globe. This is more methane charts. As you go from the uh, left end of this chart, where you see it's not so dark of colors. This is, I think, in 2008 to 2013. You see much more red. The atmosphere is indeed filling with methane right now. That's like covering the planet with a layer of glass. It is happening. If the planet's not allowed to respond on its own, they are literally blocking the rain, especially from Northern California and the Pacific Northwest. They are blanket spraying the Eastern Pacific. We have the satellite photos to prove it. That shuts off the hydrological cycle. We fry. So uh, again, these guys are they are like kids in a sandbox. They're like crazy kids in a sandbox that just want to conduct their experiments till there's nothing left. More methane. Again, the darker colors you see on the right. Uh, this, is, this is from 2008 to 2011. Much more methane saturation in the atmosphere. As one of the, one of the members of the audience brought up, as methane releases from the seafloor, it aerates the water like a bottle of champagne. Ships have no buoyancy. This is, in fact, what we've seen for many decades in, in the Bermuda Triangle. As ships go to the bottom fully intact, this is methane fields releasing. But now the fields releasing, for example, in the East Siberian Shelf of the Arctic are massive in size compared to what's been releasing. And I, I don't think they can hide this release much longer. And this hopefully will help expose the geoengineering programs. Methane bubbles could sink ships, as we've already discussed. Rising Arctic Ocean temperatures cause gas hydrate destabilization, yet more documentation from the geophysical research letters. Would an Arctic methane release spell the end of human life on Earth? Yes, it could, and it may. And I, I, I'm not trying to strip hope out of this equation. If, if we could stop geoengineering and the planet could respond on its own, that is our best tack. We know from previous events, paleoclimatic events, from 55 million years ago was the, mo the most recent methane mass expulsion. It was a global mass extinction, 70% terrestrial extinction, 95% aquatic extinction. If enough of this methane releases, it's going to be game over. It's one more reason that the planet has to be allowed to respond on its own. These programs have to be stopped. What are climate change feedback loops? As I explained with methane already, this is one of these loops. As the planet is warmed from these, these programs are exacerbating the warming, no question. As the planet warms and the methane releases, it hits the atmosphere, traps heat. That causes more methane to release more trapping of heat. This is called the feedback loop. And, it's, and these feedback loops are triggered right now. And I believe the power structure is literally in a panic. They thought they could play God with the weather, with all of us as part of this experiment. And now they know that you don't get something for nothing in this equation. I believe they're in absolute panic trying to figure out how to put the genie back in the bottle. But it's, 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 it can't be done. What they can do is stop hampering the planet's ability to respond to these problems. This is temperatures. And again, you hear a lot of argument about this. Is the planet warming? Is it cooling? It's too political. This issue is too political. You know, Al Gore is, is, is such an incredible idiot that he has, he has caused people to, to not look at the truth. And, and his hypocrisy, unbelievable hypocrisy, has really muddied the water. You take geoengineering out of the equation, and people wouldn't be scratching their heads about this. We had a snow event in Amarillo, Texas, May 1st of this year. It was 100 degrees on the ground on May 1st. It snowed on May 2nd. Anybody should know this is absolutely unnatural. This is fully documented. I, my, this is on our site. I have all the data from, from NOAA about this event on our site. Geoengineering is skewing the equation, make pe making people think that things are getting cooler. They are not. 
So uh, again, this is not about Al Gore, but geoengineering is trapping more heat than it deflects, shredding the ozone layer, stopping the hydrological cycle, killing the boreal forest, poisoning our waters and soils. Um, it, it is the, the elephant in the room at this point. Ocean acidification, also a huge factor. Our oceans are being acidified very rapidly at this point. Uh, the oceans are virtually on the verge of collapse, and we're seeing fish stocks decline some 94, 95%. If the ocean is gone, oxygen content is depleted further. That's the major source of oxygen on planet Earth, boreal forest, the second source of oxygen. Global oxygen content is indeed plummeting right now. So you can't, again, you can't hamper these systems with, with uh, the toxic spraying that these guys are doing around the globe and not have uh, biosystems collapse. Are our oceans on the brink of collapse, as we discussed? Yes, they are. These articles are out there for anybody who bothers to look, because certainly our mainstream media wouldn't cover this. They're too busy telling us when the next episode of American Idol is on. Massive fish die-offs. These are occurring around the globe as we speak. Yet more and more. And half of Southern California sea lion pups have died this winter. Many people don't know about this. There's thousands of them dying washing up at the beach. They simply have nothing to eat. Although radiation from Fukushima has been implicated in some of this, much of the rest is just simply a lack of food. And, and that's, it, these events will not be hidden much longer. That's why I have no hesitation discussing them. And people can call me alarmist. They can call me whatever they want. This is happening now. You are here. This is ice decline. Although people have referred to modeling for the, for the climate scientists, and I, I use the word loosely. I mean, the, our quote unquote scientists um, are often very disconnected from reality. They're paid to say what they say. That's true. But in fact, if we have an ice free Arctic this year, and all indication is we may, if it's not this year, it'll be next year. That's about 100 years ahead of modeling. So yes, the modeling's wrong, but it's far short of how bad it really is. And geoengineering is fueling that fire. Arctic ice death spiral. Again, the innermost ring is the mass for the Arctic ice right now. It is 19% of what it was 30 years ago. And once the ice is gone, the ocean will heat very quickly. Methane will release faster. And the temperatures we've seen rising, we know we're going to be 113 here in our area tomorrow. I mean, these are record-breaking, record-shattering temperatures. We're going to see a lot more of this if, if the planet's not allowed to respond. And based on all available data, by the way, from uh, an event five million years ago in Earth's history called the Pliocene Epoch, as there's more carbon in the atmosphere, there's normally more rain. The planet responds. The boreal forests thrive. They're not killed with these toxic particulates as the sun's blocked and the rain's blocked. And so we would have more lush conditions right now if they weren't spraying. There's other implications that aren't all positive, but the bottom line is, how do, you, how do you fly 1,000 jets or more around the planet every day dumping these toxic particulates and think you're going to do anything but harm? This is another graph on Arctic ice mass. You see it's going straight down. What the hell is happening to the Arctic sea ice? Geoengineering is happening, and it's making the situation worse by the day overall. They can, I want to stress this, geoengineering can and does create very significant short-term cooling events. It absolutely can and does. By the time you divert the jet stream, pump cold air south, artificially chemically ice nucleate, which is like throwing ice cubes into your swamp cooler, that's how you go from 100 degrees to snow in one day, as we saw in Amarillo, Texas. It can create these short-term cooling events, which are very confusing to people. How does it snow in, in, in June? Or they, they see these things on the news with the Weather Channel hypes up. But at the cost of a much worsened long-term warming, that's the price that's paid with geoengineering. New concerns about the climate change in the boreal forest. Our forests are dying. Latest report I saw from boreal forest in Alaska, 30% mortality. Anybody who says the trees are not dying, and some of our local biologists will say this, everything's fine, nothing's wrong. Drag them out in the forest and let them look at our trees. Manzanita is even dying. You ever try to kill a manzanita? It's dying everywhere. It's flashing out dead. 10 foot high plants are flashing out dead. They cannot take the bioavailable aluminum in the soil. They cannot take the increased UV. They've taken all they can handle and now they're dying. Fir trees are dying everywhere, as I said, and I think this year will be absolutely cataclysmic. When you block the rain, those who moved here probably love the forest. When you, when you block the rain and you alter photosynthesis and you load the soils with bioavailable aluminum, the trees begin to die. Now you coat them with an incendiary dust. These metals are an incendiary dust. Now let's add dry lightning because we've had diminished rainfall. We have a more conductive atmosphere, so we have more lightning now with less rain cataclysmic for the forest, and in fact, on forest fires, more dead trees, as we see here, 
What's killing the great forests of the American West? I just described that. Many people don't even know our forests are in sharp decline. They're in very, very sharp decline. And I think this year may be cataclysmic as far as the fires go. To reiterate how, many, how much metals in our soils, this is a graph that, uh, as it escalates toward the right, this is the amount of toxic heavy metals in our rivers and lakes adding up over the last uh, 20 or so years. It's adding up exponentially, and, and it's the big elephant in the room. People ask, well, why aren't the agencies discussing this? Why isn't EPA screaming their lungs off about this? Because